pass out the way you think But if you want some good advice I can offer this small wink You'll find that a little goes a long way A little goes a long way A little goes a long way for love Never feel my presence 
So you thought I would let this slip Thought you knew me so much better Let me see, let me see, let me see. All right. Inbox. Ah. Can you guys hear me? I want to make sure everybody can hear me. Something's going on with my sound here.
There we go. There we go. Th there's all kind of things going on over here. We're just now getting started, guys. Let me check all my different screens. We've been having problems left and right all day. There we go. That's off. That's on. There we go. Bingo, 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 bango, bingo, bango. Do, 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 do. Bingo, bango. Let's see. Make sure we can hear. All right. There we go. So that's what we have. Let me get this fan on up here too. If you're lucky to find someone with whom to share your every day, if you want some good advice, I can offer this small. How many of you guys? Uh, if you're here for the first time, welcome. If you are back uh, and you've been around, ooh, we've had some interesting, 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 interesting outputs over the last week. Uh, I want to get into this thing, uh, but before we get into it, I want to give a good welcome to everybody. Shout out to the moderators. Shout out to the crew that holds it down. Guys, we're going to have all kinds of people coming over here. First timers, some timers, new timers. Uh, as long as they're being respectful in the comment section, let them talk. Nobody, here's the thing. If you type in caps, if you type in caps, you will be blocked, okay? If you type in caps, you will be blocked. If you talk crazy and curse, you will be blocked. Um, do that at your house. Don't do that over here. Uh, because tonight's already going to be a sensitive enough topic. We don't need anything else. So here's where it goes. Here's where it goes. So you want to be white, huh? Is that what it is? Is that what you're trying to do? You want to be white. You want to be white. That's what you trying to do with all this, um, uh, you know, high value, level up, get the bag. You're just trying to be white. That's what it is. You're trying to be white. And it's time that we call some folks out for trying to be white. Okay? Because sooner or later... You got to come back to reality. Sooner or later, you're going to get out there in the world. Oh, what am I doing? Hold on. I changed up I, my straws over there. We're going to try something a little different. Seeing as though somebody uh, made a joke the other day about my straw. No, I don't always have to use a straw. Um, well, wait till you see the next straw. When you always trying to be white... So they say, because apparently you can't do, apparently, you know, nothing that's black is apparently worth a damn. So I guess if you're trying to do anything worth a damn, that means you got to be trying to be white, right? So how many people have heard this? So you trying to be white. Trying to be white. You trying to trying to get what the what these white folk want. You 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 just trying to get white folk love and white folk acceptance and turning your back on the black folks. And then the funny thing is, then all of a sudden you get all the that <laughs> woo. One of the best shows I want to talk about that kind of typifies this trying to be white thing is. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Twenty twenty Red Bull. That's a good year. Trying to be white is just another way to insult you for trying to say you're trying to do something. Okay. How many black folks have heard this? You trying to be white? 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 
you go back to the hit TV show, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, you had Carlton and you had Hillary. Carlton and Hillary were kids who were raised uh, with privilege from a black family. They grew up in an affluent part of California and they went to private school and all this other kind of stuff. And one of the biggest knocks against Carlton is he was black, but he wasn't black, black. You know, he hung out with white folks. He liked, you know, to dance goofy. He liked, you know, Richard Nixon and crap like that. And then Hillary, his sister, you know, she didn't get as much crap for it. You know, she was just a valley girl and da, 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 da. But you know what? When they got out into the real world, went out to college or whatever, they got their wake up calls at various different times. I want to say Carlton was getting called coon and sellout and all this other kind of stuff. Every in the episodes when they start dealing with real stuff. And let's get right to it. Black folks who talk about high value excellence, trying to do something, are often derided by people in the community for trying to want to be white. Why? There are plenty of rules, plenty of reasons why this is. But today we're going to talk about, you know, as a black man, I've heard this a lot in my life. You don't talk like a black man. You don't speak like a black man. You're not this, you're not that. So, you know, I always have my black card checked. But you know what? Um, So much so that a lot of black men have to overcompensate uh, with the, you know, with the way they speak, the way they carry themselves to where a lot of guys have jacked themselves up trying to be street or hang out for the block. You know? Flunking out of school. You hear people talking about they didn't want to do good in school because they didn't want to be accused of trying to be white. But what is it that you want when we talk about being white? Black people can make money. What is it we tend to talk about when we talk about being white? Oh, we're talking about relationships. Oh, yeah, relationships. One of the biggest tropes with high-value black men is when he get on, he's going to leave your ass for a white girl. That's one of the biggest things that so many sisters hold over black men's head. Well, uh, yeah, you may be a high value brother, but when you get on, he's going to leave you for a white girl. Oh, okay. Is he? He's going to leave you for a white girl? Is that the real thing you're worried about? But let's say you go out and you go to school, you go to high school, you make good grades, you go to college, make good grades, go get a career, go out there and get competitive, go out there and make yourself a high value man and then what? You look for your counterpart where is she where is she Uh uh-oh where is she is she looking for you or is she looking for someone else we're gonna get into all of this tonight we're gonna get all of it out on the table the stereotypical black man a stereotypical black woman the stereotypical woman a a high value black man supposed to go for but what about the black what about the man a stereotypical high value black woman supposed to go for because apparently there ain't no high value black men black men on a certain level they don't exist or if they do they're gay down low rude whatever because you know what the things that it takes to be a successful man in the world you know being confident intelligent and assertive straightforward direct focused disciplined structured plan leadership mentality, all the things that so many women say that they want in the black community, those things often get tasked as being massaging war. You're toxic. You're rude. You're this, you're that. But if you were not black, you know, those kind of things, if Brad were to speak that way, oh, he's so strong and he's an alpha male and a leader. And okay, so, all right. All right, brothers have kind of started to learn and say, you know what? I'm tired of jumping from foot to foot to foot to foot. This is what it is to be a high value man of any race. And when it gets right down to it, I'm going to deal with the women who can get on my program. So many of you so-called high value women out there, you want your high value counterpart, but 
You cannot get on a program. Why? Because you've been trying to be white. What does that mean? Uh, listening to what the, what the media has told you. There ain't no good black men out there. You can't depend on no black men. You don't need no black men. You need to be strong and independent. You don't need to worry about anything. And they put this thing up there in front of you and say, this is what you need to ascend to. This is what you need to try to. This is the myth. Here it is. I got no problem with her. Go on, Becky. Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, Gidget. Gidget. That's what it is. That's what you want us into. That's what you want to be. But more and then, but what about your counterpart? What about your counterpart? See, your counterpart, in order to get to the level to be a high value man, he has to have a whole lot of that in him. He got to have a whole lot of that in him. But when he acts this way or speaks that way, then all of a sudden it's toxic, it's rude, it's this and that. So, okay, so if you can't deal with it from a black man, I guess you want it from him. Where's Waldo? There he is. Hi, Waldo. Been waiting for you, buddy. Been waiting for Waldo. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and put him a Waldo costume. There he is. Supposed to be out there, get out there and do everything that every man else is supposed to do. But yet we're supposed to, you know, be. We're supposed to allow you to talk in your own kind of way, act in your kind of way. We're not supposed to have any standards. You know, a black man that does anything, if he has standards, if he has wants or desires or whatever, he ain't be, he ain't acting black. He's acting white. You acting like a high value white man and y'all act like y'all built Wakanda and got a patriarchy or whatever, whatever. And see, a lot of brothers have jumped from foot to foot to foot to foot. And yet what they said, you know, I'm not playing this game anymore. I'm not playing this game anymore because at the end of the day, what am I coming home to? Who am I coming home to? Is the person I'm coming home to, the neighborhood, the community, do they even like you? Do they respect you? Do they want to hear what you have to say or do they just want what you can do for them? So we end up having black women who have a low level disc, who le low level respect, uh, low level contempt for a lot of black men. And it doesn't matter what the brother does. He can do everything right. He's still going to get talk to the same way as if he did everything wrong. What message are you sending when you say you want a man to get out there and be a provider, a prophet, a priest, get out to be competitive, everything else. But when he comes back to the neighborhood or whatever, you call him corny, lame, this or that. You want to try to play games with him, make him wait while he had babies for other men. And at the end of the day, you say, these guys ain't worth nothing. So you decide to go on out. You decide to go and say, you know what? Keith is cool, but let me go ahead and check with Brad and Lee and Ahmed and Enrique. But well, first off, Ahmed ain't got nothing for you. Ahmed and Lee ain't got nothing for you. They're like, oh no, all that attitude, all that. I don't, mm -mm. Unless you are diehard, submissive, feminine, uh, it's not a non-starter. Enrique, maybe. But the goal is Brad. Apparently, all black men want to be Brad and let folks tell it. Brad is best, the best man in the world. But here's the thing. As any of us know, when it gets right down to it, groups cut for themselves. Groups cut for themselves. When you're a black person trying to not be black and trying to go over here and hang in this world, you're a person without a country because you don't fit any place. Black community don't accept you because something just ain't quite right about you. They don't know if they can trust you. And these folks over here, oh, they'll work with you. They'll use you. But as soon as it as soon as it's beneficial, they will decide to put you in your place. They'll decide to put you in your place. 
as they should. So how do you navigate these high value worlds, these things like that? Black men and black women. See, the problem is black women are navigating it alone. And you're making all kinds of errors and mistakes and judgment, trying to navigate a high value world without black men. Oh, we're going to get into it tonight. You think because you live in a world where big mama and there's a matriarch in the black community that you can take that strong, independent, caring, white attitude to non-black groups of men and they're going to hear it from you? Oh, no. Men respect other men. You ain't going to talk to Brad, Lee, Ahmed, and Enrique like you can talk to Keith. Keith is more understanding. Keith understands because there's Ray Mama. But see, you won't accept Keith being the alpha male, the high value man. You want Keith to be beta for you. Oh, we're going there. So Keith is tired of jumping back and forth. And he's like, why am I going to do all this? No matter what I do, I can become Will Smith and I'm still going to get jaded. So now... Brothers is like, fine, I'll go ahead and get, I'll go ahead and get what? Oh, wh where'd she go again? Hi, hi, where'd she go? Where'd she go? I'll go ahead and get that. And there used to be a time where brothers got tired of getting talked about. But now we're on this thing to where now high value or high value women openly saying explore your options date out and here's the thing i say become the highest value of anything you can and make your options open but i never bash my own group but the funny thing is when you are a woman and you start to bash the men of your own group to try to big up another group those other groups take notice i can't tell you how many meetings i've sat in in corporate america where i've had men of different races say hey man how do y'all how do y'all put up with this? How do you deal with that? First of all, we got to get these likes up, man. Uh, I'm not going to go down this path because uh, -uh. y'all looking for a fight. Oh, we're going to get into it tonight, but we better get the likes up. Uh, the likes ain't even up over 50%, man. Come on, man. What are we doing? 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 You want a high value, man? Okay. You want a high value non-black man? Okay. Can you even deal with a high value black man? Let's see. But I need my likes up before we keep on moving. I don't know why the music is not going. So anyway. The chat is moving, huh? The chat is moving. I don't know why the music is not playing through. Could y'all hear any music playing through? Because I didn't. I didn't hear any music playing through there. Uh, sound effects. Do, do, do. We're going to get that. Uh, there we go. Oh, they've done an update. That's what it was. Anywho, well, we're going to have to do it without music. All right. Let me slow, slow the chat room down because it's moving too fast. When you're trying to become the best version of yourself, high value this or that, it's hard to fit in in the black community and you ain't going to get acceptance outside of it. People will work with you, but groups deal with their own groups. Groups deal with their own groups as they always have. That's how human beings are. That's how human beings are. So what happens, the longer you stop dealing with your own, you start to get out of step. You start to lose touch. You know, you can't relate. 
You start to lose touch. You can't relate. And it becomes problematic. It becomes problematic. Why? Because when you're dealing with other groups, you are there to be used. That's how they interact with one another. Chinese use Japanese. Japanese use Chinese. French use Germans. Germans use French. Those are nationalities. But even inside of a race, they break it down. So we're crazy to think you can't deal with your own people. Eventually, when the crap hits the fan, that's why I love these posts, you know, dystopic kind of things like Walking Dead or this and that. People go back to tribes. You go back to tribes. The thing is, are you so high value? Have you been out there so long? Are you so detached to where you're out of step with your own tribe? To where you honestly think the people on the, on the, in the other tribes really got your back? Then what happens? You go to somebody in another tribe when you need them, when there's something's on the line, and then you end up getting dissed. Because they're playing the game of power. They're playing the game of power. You may be a strong woman, but if you're out here by yourself, thinking you're going to get what she has, it's going to drive you crazy to trying to get what she has. Because you're trying to do it by yourself, out of step with your tribe, out of touch with your tribe, alone, trying to get over here to try to become her. And then here's the problem. You're going to have to deal with her. You're going to have to deal with her. Because she want her man. Oh, yeah. She sees you coming a mile away. She wants her man. And she wants yours, too. Because everybody is looking and seeing how you done thrown your man away. How you talk about your men, how you just, how you casually, you make songs about it, how, how your men ain't crap. Scrubs and all other kind of stuff. All right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Other groups of men see how you talk about your men. And you think they're going, what? Do you think they're going, oh, oh, you, you thought, oh, I get it. You thought that you were different. You thought that this don't matter. It matters to everybody, especially to men. See, the first people it matters to is men. Men will fetishize you. They'll hook up with you. I've talked about Ben and J-Lo, Ben Affleck and J-Lo, but when it came right down to it, he got rid of J-Lo and got... Jennifer Garner, because this matters. Everybody understands that. But when you think you're better than your men, you don't need your men, even the highest value men in your group are still beneath average of y'all. What did you think? It was going to last forever? Now this whole world is connected. There's the internet. And now other parts of the story are getting told. Now the world's starting to see that, wait, 51% of black men are single and child. 64% are in the middle class. Black men are statistically some of the best fathers on the planet. And story after story after story. All the good stories, but the stories about good stuff about black men is getting told by non-black people. You got non-black women out here advocating for black men more than you got black women advocating for black men. In mass. Now, I'm not going to say there are some people who say some stuff nice in there, but in general, I remember a world to where black men have been getting bashed since a color per the color purple and on and on. So I find it funny when black men finally start talking to you and having a conversation in public that nothing a brother says is ever considered to be anything other than horrible and bad. You're tearing us down to you. You make them want to kill themselves. And oh my God, but see, you can't, you, that don't work because you can't act like her. You can't act like her because you got too much of a reputation for being them. You built it. 
You built a reputation. You built a reputation. Here's the goal. You built a reputation. Strong, don't need. Difficult to get along with. You're the person they... You're the person even in corporate America. They put you in HR. They put you in charge of stuff because they know that you'll work hard for Brad. Brad will tell you, yeah, that Keisha, man, she's a she's a pit bull. She's a bulldog, man. When she gets those reports, she's watching those company bottom lines because they know they, yep, Keisha will work hard for Brad, but let Keith come along and try to say something to Keisha. Keisha will throw Brad... Mm, all right, that's how it's been for the longest, but now it's coming full circle. That's kind of like what I want this show to be called, The Circle. Things are coming full circle now. The world is, you know, this country is not the d dominant power it once was. A global economy. Worldwide communications and connections. And here we are, and now everybody is in the middle of this global situation, is coupling up with their groups. And what do you have? Oh, do you want to be that? No, that's not. That's not. First off, that's a fantasy. Miss Anne is a fantasy. Get rid of Scarlett O'Hara. Gone with the wind. It was never like that. 72% of white women work. 72% of white mothers work. The average white man in this country earns $50,000. The average black man earns $40,000. There's not $10,000 difference in the treatment the black men get. See, you brothers are tired of trying to be brothers are tired of being told that we got to do that, that, that he's better. Brothers are tired of, of being told that you got to be him. Because even when you do all that stuff, what do you get? What is name me 10 black men in this country who are doing it the right way? So how does this all play out? Eventually, you be eventually men decide men adjust. Men adjust and make it happen. Quietly and going on about their business. But like I've always said, women of any group need the men of any group. You need the men of your group, ladies. You need the men of your group. But can you relate to them? Can you relate to them? Or are, the, are you that out of step with it? You listen to women over, over, night overnight talking about what they want. Talk about what they want. Talk about what they need. And that's fine. But what is your what is the man of your group want? Because it's blood sport out here. If you think just because you're this or this, if you think for a second that she is going to let you have her man, you're out of your mind. Oh, and here's the best part. They, everybody sees how you act. Brad will use you. She'll befriend you. Brad will fetishize you, but he's a man. He's very clear. Since the feminist movement of the early 60s, I mean, since the feminist movement, they've been using black women to, for their agenda for the longest. You've heard these stories. Black women have never been subjugated to black men. You've never been oppressed by a patriarchy. None of that stuff's happened in this country. Knock it off. But you're telling the story that she gave you. And why'd she do? She put a wedge in between you and your man and you decided to you decide you had a choice to make. And then what did she do? Why you separated from your man? She was going right on in the back door. This is why you're so mad that so many of your high value black men tend to be with white women because they split you up. You took the bait and then they Kim Kardashian you. Because they got Chris Jenner's out there saying, uh, you better get the weight down uh, and get the bag. You got women that say, we can't even get black women to lose weight for Brad. So y'all are going the opposite direction. 
So you're out there alone. And then what do you hear? We're unprotected. We can't get nobody to protect us. Okay, cool. Well, the men of your group, you didn't want you don't want to hear nothing from us because with protect with protection comes rules and structure. You can't just get protection without having some, well, we got to be able to control this. You can't say, I need you to protect my house or protect this place, and you just want to leave both doors open and all the windows open. No, we got to put some systems in place. Let me see what's going on in the chat room. You got to put some systems in place. You got to do what you got to do. You got to let the men be the men because here's the thing. No men of any group fear women. Brad, Lee, Ahmed, and Enrique, they don't fear you. And at any time, the only reason they ain't up on you right now is because they don't know when and if somebody's going to step up to them and check them. But what they will do is they will let her run amok on you. And then she comes to you because she can learn. She knows how to manipulate Brad, get what she wants out of the world. She can show sure manipulate you. Hey, hey, and befriend you and everything else. Next thing you know, she got your man. She got your money. She got your business. She got everything you want. And you still saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought if I just, I wanted to be like her. And I figured if I just threw my man under the bus, that somebody would come rescue me. And they said, wait a minute, we saw how you treated your man. You think we're going to do that? No, we want ours. Everybody want theirs. Why don't you want yours? Oh, how's that working out for you? How's that working out for you? Because anytime you have a group of women out from under male authority or leadership, that's fine. You are free to do whatever you want. It's open season, a free market. Cool. But at that point, you cannot get mad when the market does what it does. Okay, let's talk about it. Economic systems. Capitalism is the best we've figured out so far. The socialism, communism, everything else. But in free market capitalism, the market decides. Free market. No regulations. You're not regulated anymore, ma'am. Your body, your choice. Your womb, your choice. You are under your, ain't no daddies in the house. Even if the daddies are in the house, you ain't listening to them. The men of your group, you don't respect them. You get to pick. And now it is a free for all out here. It is a free for all here and here. And you're so far removed, so far detached, so disconnected from reality. You honestly thought or think that you can just go over to the other side and do what you want. Like you're one of them as a black man. I have never let myself believe that because I'm in these positions in corporate America, that they look at me the same. I know I'm black. I don't care how many times they say, Hey man, I see, don't see a color or whatever. Bull crap. Because with men tribe matters, but you ladies, some of you ladies actually believed it. Hey, colors, we're colorblind and I'm black. Oh, white stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe that crap. Uh huh. Great. Mm. Where's your husband? The, the, the men of your group ain't good enough. They're, they're so bad. You openly talk about no Negro diets and aborting black kids. And I've heard some crazy crap. So is other so of other people. Let me be the one to tell you. I've sat in me in places in corporate America where white men have asked me, how do you deal with these women at home? I can't deal with her at work. Pakistani men. Cantonese men. Iranian. Iraqis. I'm like, uh, So what happens? Here's where we are. Brad don't want you. Brad wants Brad wants his woman. His woman didn't play you. She didn't got she didn't she didn't 
She done, she ain't got your secrets. She did what happened in the in the fifties, and you know the white artists stole from the black artists, and then next thing you know, the Beach Boys is singing Motown stuff. This story is as old as time. How did you let this happen, black? Because our women are uncovered by any men. You don't have any men in your life. No logical people. You've decided that black men are your enemy. They were not worth anything. So you're making all your decisions. And here's the thing. You're responsible for them all. Because black men are responsible for all of theirs. But when we get to stuff like we've had right now, this pandemic and all this other kind of stuff, people start tribing up. People start tribing up. People start tribing up. Where are you going to go? Uh-oh. This is where the prodigal son and the prodigal daughters come up. Let's get into it. Prodigal son and the prodigal daughters. Let's get into it. I mean, the prodigal son and the prodigal daughter. And here's the thing. Men have, black men have never despised, detested. Black men have never been the things that a lot of people have said we are. They're not. Oh, the, the guys on this side, they're just toxic and they hate women. Then, then you just shows you don't listen. Any woman who comes over to my platform, you think, well, this woman said he's this, or this woman says that, go watch the videos, decide for yourself. Ladies, I will tell you this. Stop listening to what women tell you about men. Go find out for yourself. Because men who are men, men who have to work amongst men, have a way of talking. Thank, and one of the best videos that ever happens was Rebecca Lynn Pope made a video saying, I'm no longer matchmaking for black women anymore because you got unrealistic expectations. And one of the best things she said is you want men to talk to you like they're women. They're different. If you want him to talk to you like your girlfriend or your gay friend, he's going to hurt your feelings every day, boo. I'm so thankful that Red Sister made that video because so many brothers said, finally, a black woman letting her understand that you want black men who are out here leaders and sh building all this other kind of stuff, then he has to do what he has to do and you're going to have to do what you have to do and that means support him. But are you ready for that? Or are you so far out of touch? Do you fear coming back to the group? Because the people who have been out of the group, you you don't you don't relate. Here's the fear. If I go back, they're gonna abuse me. If I go back, they're gonna punish me. If I go back, they're gonna torture me. If I go back, I don't know what's gonna happen. Why? Because in places where you don't want to admit, you know how you would do them if they came to you on their knees. That's right. People who tend to fear people being in power tend to sit back and say, I don't want to be submissive to that, to that person. I don't want to be under that person because I know what I would do to them if I had power over them. Uh-oh. See, men aren't that way. Men aren't that way. That's why it's not the prodigal daughter. It's the prodigal son. Men aren't that way. Men are very forgiving. Men are very forgiving. Because at the end of the day, let me say it loud and clear. 80 plus percent of black men want to be with black women. They want black wives and black children. Always have, always will. It's human nature. You can't get over the biology. There have always been people who have decided to go to another group, but the vast majority of every group wants to keep its group going. And if you've been out there talking that craziness, talking about getting rid of your group, talking about not having more men of your group, talking this craziness, I got one question to ask you. Are you speaking about your own specific lived experience? Ladies, are you? Because here's the problem. Just like last night, many times women will come over here and start talking about stuff that they are not experiencing. 
And that's why I love doing this show. Now, let me talk to you about you. I want to hear what, what Nene Nim said, what Auntie Nim said. I want to hear about you. And it turned out that you ain't had nothing happen in a while. You had somebody hurt your feelings back in high school or college. Well, why don't you talk about men? Do, yeah. Men do the same thing. Yeah, but see, men are more forgiving. Men don't hold grudges. Men don't have a low level of contempt and disrespect. Well, I've seen some horrible stuff. Yeah, uh-huh, right. It's over. The gender war is winding down. Black men are raising their hand everywhere and saying, look, whether or not, I've heard many black men, I hear them all the time, I want a woman, I want a wife, I want kids. I'm finally starting to hear more women say, yeah, I want to, I want to be a stay-at-home wife too. Okay, that's where it is. There are going to be extremes over here and extremes over here. I don't listen to the extremes. The extremes are going to do what extremes do. But the people in the middle, what happens? The people who want to deal, what happens? This side, eventually the Soviet Union and the United States, the Cold War ended. See, a lot of people are familiar with how to do the war, but how do you do the peace? And that's what we're talking about, how to do the peace. And see, when you try to do the peace, there always try to be negotiations, olive branches. Hey, man, let's talk. Hey, man, let's say what's going on. Hey, come on over here. Let's talk. Come out to Camp David. And then what ends up happening? Oh, well, I was going to come to Camp David, but you're really not what you say you are. No, I, I'd rather be at war with you. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You said you wanted peace. Your group wants peace. My group wants peace. Everybody wants peace. When we spoke and I invited you to Camp David, you said, well, yes. Thank you for inviting me to Camp David. You're, I've, you're nice and wonderful. And I, have I not treated you with respect? Yes. But then why didn't you sit down and come have the conversation? Well, because ultimately, no, you're an American. And I just, nope, you're just all bad. So I, nope, nah, nah. See, I saw you driving and you turned right at this stoplight. And see, the last time I talked to a guy and he was in a car and turned right, he killed all my rabbits. So I, can't, I just can't risk it. I can't risk it. I cannot risk you killing all my rabbits. And I saw you turn right at that light. And the last time someone turned right. Now, now hold up. Wait a minute. I turned right at a light? Yes. But it was a one-way street. I mean, forget all the killing the rabbits and everything else, but it was a one-way street. I couldn't turn left. It's against the law. But, but I was driving the speed limit, right? Right. You watch me drive the speed limit, right? Right? You watch me drive through, through you've been you've been watching me on the GPS and overhead copter, right? Right. Have I broken any traffic laws? No. Did I stop and let the little old lady pass? Yes. Did I get the cat out of the tree? Yes. Did I did did I blow the horn at somebody who cut me off? Yes. But in general, am I a polite, respectful driver, 10 and 2? Yes. So you mean. You don't want to come to Camp David because I turned right on a one-way street? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, really? How do you negotiate with something like that? Oh, you didn't want to negotiate no way. You were just, no, no, you, you are going to find a reason. You were just looking. I mean, man, gentlemen, you've been, come on. Everybody's been in the car before and had a cop behind you and they've been tailing you and following you. They're just waiting for you to do something wrong. You 10 and 2, you turn the radio down, you turn the air conditioner off, you, you, you sitting there like this. People stop talking in the car, you're like... You're going five miles under the speed limit. There's a video on YouTube right now. A black man gets pulled over in Louisiana for going five miles under the speed limit. I swear to God. It's on one of the audit channels. And the cop said, you know why I pulled you over? He's like, no, I don't. Well, you're going five miles under the speed limit. Five miles under? He's like, yeah. 
It's middle of the day. Wouldn't you think that's a little odd? That's what the cop asked the white, that's what the white cop asked the black dude. What? Wouldn't you think that's a little odd? Somebody's going five miles under the speed limit during the day? License and registration. And the guy has a dash cam. He's like, bruh, did you see that? And the cop comes in and said, now here's the thing. I'm not going to write you a ticket for going under the speed limit. I'm not going to write you a ticket for not breaking the law. Have a nice day. And he throws a, a I'm only going to give you a warning for going under the speed limit. And the brother's like, Wait a minute. He gets out of the car and say, officer, this isn't even a ticket. It's even a warning. Man, this is your receipt from Popeyes. Oh, yeah. See, uh, see, you was going under the speed limit, right? And uh, I ran out of ticket pads because I was going to write you a warning for going under the speed limit. I mean, you weren't breaking the law, so I was just going to write you a warning to let you know what the speed limit was. So in case you did one day go over the speed limit, you can go back to the ticket. Remember to not go over the speed limit. But I don't have any more ticket pads because I've been profiling people all day. So I only had my receipt left from Popeye's. And you look like, I mean, you, you look like one of them Popeye's people. So you know how Popeye's be. I was in Popeye's and she was acting kind of foul and had a little attitude. And so I'm still in kind of a bad mood. So when I saw you driving under the speed limit, no matter what you did, you know, <laughs> you kind of reminded me of the Popeye's. And, you know, so just don't do it again. But officer, I didn't do nothing. I just drove down the street. Mind my own business, legally. Yeah, but see, you're in a car and you could. You could if you don't, if you want to. Yeah, but I didn't. Yeah, man, but see, if you keep talking to me, I'm going to have to tase you. I'm going to have to shoot you because I'm fearing for my life because you, you, you fit the profile. Fit the profile of what? Uh, of everybody else who I've ever said I had a problem with. But, sir, I'm just trying to do the right thing you, no you ain't you turned right i saw you turn right i saw you turn right three weeks ago i saw you turn right so now i got you i saw you turn right that was you in that tree yes i saw you turn right but it was on a one-way street don't confuse me with the facts. You are looking for a reason to go right. You always do that. And I'm just so, I'm, uh, and you're in my neighborhood going right. All right, officer. Have a good day. Brother turned away. Pow, 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 pow. Why'd you shoot me in the back? I, I fear for my life. Brothers are getting tired of this shit. Brothers are tired of being treated this way. You can't do nothing right. You, can't, you, you try to be nice, you still can't do nothing right. Because you fit the description of somebody who killed all the, the rabbits. <laughs> let's, open the, let's open the line up. Let's open the line up. Because at the end of the day, I got to say this. I can't play the music, so we just can assume, well, you know what? I can't do this way. We can assume this, though. Here's the funny thing. And if you don't, and, and the funny thing in the black community, this has all been done in public because we don't control no media. This has all been done in public in front of the rest of the world. And people see this and people see other women see how you, how you getting treated. And they say, "Woo, well, damn, I'm tired of being under this. I'm trying to eating celery and drinking water. I can actually have some thighs in the butt and I don't mind if he turns right. I don't mind if you turn left. Mm-hmm. That's what ends up happening. So, don't get upset because Brad, don't get upset because Karen, they did what they supposed to do. They protected themselves. They used us. And now it's time to decide whether or not you want to come back. But can you come back in good faith or are you just thinking... It's going to be the same old war. But some people are going to have to die in the war. Some people are not cut out for peace. Some people will make war even when there is peace. Me? Not me. I'll make fun of it. I'll make light of it. But the beautiful thing is, 
when you are who you say you are and you do what you say you're going to do, people who have a rational mind can make up their own. So, how do you come home is the question. How do you come home? Black women, how do you come home? How do you come home to the men that you said you didn't need? The men you said you didn't want? The educated lames, the losers, the cornballs, the weirdos. How do you come home to them? Because them other guys ain't got nothing for you. And them other women want everything you got. Your men, your business, everything. Because that's how they are. As they should be. Let's open the call line. Yay, money world. Money. How you come home? I want to come home to a black man. I want to come home. They ain't all dusty. They ain't all crusty. They ain't all dusty. They ain't all crusty because if they were, them other folks wouldn't want them. How do we make this happen? I miss him. Money world. How do you come home? How do you come home? How oh, you can't come and you see. So you can't come home because see, Nene and Big Mama and them, Nene, Big Mama and TT and them, they could be like, no, 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 no. See, you can't go, girl. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. Stay over here. Stay over here in Spencer Alley. Stay. Stay. Stay with us. You're safe over here. But I'm not happy over here. And you're not happy over here. Everybody else got a man. You got a man. You want me to stay over here with you. And you got a man. But you want me to stay over here and have nobody. Right. Why? Because that's what we do. Because you can't trust them. Those guys will turn right. And when they turn right, they just might. First, they start by turning right. Next thing you know, then they start by killing your bunnies. I can just say it. this is what happens. First, right, then bunnies. First, right, then bunnies. Man, I hope this sound comes through. Hello. Hi. Oh wait. I cannot hear. Can you hear me now? I cannot hear you. Um, how about now? I think it may be something with my computer right now. Um. Now? You know what? No. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop, 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 stop. Let me see something. Can y'all hear her? Can y'all hear her? I can't hear you, ma'am. I want to see if they can hear you. Because I may have to shut down and restart. Something with my computer right now. Say something, ma'am. Um, I'm testing, testing, one, two, three. Nope. Hold yep. on. I can. They can hear you, but I can't. They can. Okay. Do, do, do. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, input. Here, do, 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 do. Okay. There we go. Say something now. Test, test. Still can't hear you. One, two, three. Uh, 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 uh. Darn it. 
Can you see? They just had a system update, folks. Yeah, you guys can hear her, but I can't hear her. Um, input. You know what? Let me do that. Uh, hold on just a second. Give me just a second, guys. Give me just a second. All right. Uh, all right, Aaron, can you hear me? Yeah. There we go. Yay. Yay. All right. I can hear you. Now I want to make sure they can hear you over here. What's going on, Aaron? Um, so I just wanted to talk about hair. Okay, hold on. Because this. This second. All right, Aaron, can you hear me? Yeah. There we All go. right. You want to talk, girl? I'm on the wrong. You want to talk about hair? And we on the uh the the the, the, the so you think you white show? Well, the thing is, uh huh. Versus wearing your your wig, a wig. Okay, go ahead. And my thing is, I've noticed that when I wear my hair like this versus where I'm wearing a long straight wig, I get more attention. So it makes me wonder, do men really prefer the natural look or the straighter, attention from who? The white look. Black men want black women to look like black women. Um, black men are tired of black women with all this damn wig, these, these from hell lace fronts. With your forehead back here, we would rather you have your hair be on your head than all that. St yes. Yes. Men want um, you to wear. But I noticed, like, so I'm on, like. Go ahead. So I'm on, like, dating profiles, and I have, like. My Online dating profile. My... Online? Yeah. It's not the real world. It does not count. Um, online dating profiles yeah, okay you cannot assume what the online dating is does not count yeah so um so are you actively dating yes have you ever dated uh outside of your community yes what's your preference um i don't know if i have a preference i mean I, th I think I've dated more white men than my own race. Okay. Has it, have you been proposed so guess, to one by one? No. Uh, where are you from no. originally? I'm from NorCal. I live in LA right now. Uh, California is different animal, you know. <laughs> yeah. And here's the thing. Um, and can, where I live. Is can you? Okay. This was to a, a, a tongue in cheek um presentation but very real things go on go into dating do you not date uh black men because you have an issue with them or do you date white men because you're more attracted to them why are you choosing what you choose is the question i think maybe i choose white men because they're more attracted more attracted to them yes okay what are, what a are, uh, it's on a look standpoint or what? I would say the look. And I, I feel like they're more, um, how, how do I say, like easier or um, nicer? No, no, no. Now, now, now we're going, now we got a problem. What, what you feel like as far as a look is one thing, but as far as nicer, how are you, how are you determining who's nice? I think I feel like um, like black men have always well. Yeah, be careful, careful, careful. What you, okay, hold on. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Remember where you yes. remember where you are. You're not in the land of Pookie and Ray Ray. You're not in a land of everybody. You're over here in the land of men who can compete with everybody else. 
Have you dated black men in that area? No. Well, then you can't tell me what it's like to date black men and compare them against white men. See, oftentimes people, women who date interracially, you'll date a lower caliber of black men and then a higher caliber of non-black men and try to compare the two. You can't do that. Next to what you're saying. Women don't make, women, okay. when you talk about a black man, you don't make distinctions. And that's completely unfair to black men. My question is this, if you can get a, do you date higher caliber white men? Uh, maybe not. Okay. Maybe not to like well, what you would say. Well, here's the thing. Are, are your, are both of your parents black? Yes. All right. If you're going to, here's the only thing I ask about anybody dating. The problem with people who tend to date out is disparaging the people back in your group. No one wants to hear you disparage your group, especially when you don't have that kind of experience. Like when I, when I dated an Asian woman, I didn't talk about black women, but unfortunately right. so many black women who date out tend to not speak favorably about black men. Yeah. True. Do you have anything good to say about black men? I do. Romantically? Um, Romantically? Romantically, um, I do not. Okay, so you're what, gonna give black men some what? Some generalized compliments, which is which is an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Has anyone ever said that to you before? No. That's that's a lot of black men's issue. Not that you date yeah. white men. It's not that you date other people. Not no more, black men honestly don't really care. They care that you yeah. don't say night that you you don't talk about black men in a neutral or a reasonable way in the same areas. You put black men it sounds as though you don't really know black men like that. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah, my my dad wasn't uh, around much. Okay. So maybe I don't know if that could be why. Well, here's the thing. I don't judge a person's preference, but okay. what I do say is when you say white men are nicer, I am going to ask, what does that mean? And most people won't ask. They'll just take it and say, well, this one black woman said nice men, white men are nicer than black men. And they'll take it as the gospel. And you didn't yeah. mean it that way, but take it. Okay. Let's flip it. Let's flip the situation. Well, yeah. for me, I could give you an example. Well, let, um, well, let me, let me, let's flip the situation and give me an example. What if I sure. were talking to you and said, you know what? I'm a high value black man. I can date pretty much when I want, but I prefer, I prefer, uh, Korean women versus to black women. Why? Because they're just they're just nicer. They're just better. Yeah, I would feel offended. <laughs> for well, sure. Thank you for saying that black men are human. Because we feel offended when you say somebody's nicer without knowing why. That's all we right. want you. That's all it's all this is is a conversation. Because we have because here's what it says. You don't seem like a uh, uh, you seem like a really nice person and you just didn't say it in the way that you thought it would be offensive, but that's the problem. We don't, we're so far it's separated between black men and black women, especially to where we don't even relate to one another, to where we just speak about each other and other groups hear how we talk about each other. Cause you don't hear other groups talk about each other like this. They don't, they right. may insult each other, but they don't drag each other. They don't bash. I ain't never heard, uh, White women say, I ain't going to have no more white babies. I'm not going to have no more white men babies. I ain't never heard that. I never heard no woman say that. But I've definitely heard black women say it. Right, I hear you. Well, thank you for being honest. I'm going to go ahead and put you in because there's some people coming in. Here's the thing, guys. Um, th in the comment section, moderators, do your job. Allow people to say what they have to say as long as they're not being overly rude. 
Um, I don't expect everybody to agree. We're going to have a broad audience tonight and we get nowhere arguing. Aaron, is that it? I'm going to mute you and yeah. I'm going to open. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to mute you, but you're still here. Okay. Um, the, okay. Close. Uh, Dafina. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? I can. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. So you want to be white? No. <laughs> I, uh, went to school in middle school um through college with white people mm -hmm. um so i did not had a lot of toxic experiences being one of you had a, um, hold on hold on say, it, say again you had a lot of what had a lot of very toxic racist experiences with white people so um i never could see myself in any type of relationship with a white man okay now uh so what did you have on the topic so where I'm kind of in a space where I'm trying to figure out doing some self-reflection on like, how do I become a high value woman to be able to attract a high value man? And part of the crossroads that I feel like I'm coming to is saying, well, I'm 27. Will I attract a black man? Should Danger I just keep my zone. dating pool extremely open? Even oh, though hold on, hold on. I am. Let me stop mm -hmm. like that. You're 27 and will you attract a black man? Did I hear that? Yes. Okay. Let's Attract a high, like a, a high value, black high value man, black say. man. So let's start mm -hmm. here. Let's start here. You're 27. How mm -hmm. tall are you? Five feet. Dress size. Size 12. I've been losing weight. Quarantine. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> right there, right there, you've been losing weight. What's the largest dress size you've ever been? Uh, size 18. Okay. A five foot size 18 woman won't get a high value man of any race. Right. See, this is what a lot of high value. This is what a lot of black men don't understand. I've said this on my channel. You tell the men what you think they deserve by your looks and your weight. Mm. What would you say a woman, your height, not you, not you, mm -hmm. but what would you say a woman, your height, is, and your weight is telling the men they just, what do you think a woman your height and weight is telling the men they deserve? Um, and I'll answer the question as myself when I was a, a size 18, I will say even now as I'm still slimming down, that I didn't care about myself. And so if no, no, I no. can't care about myself, how can I care for a child? Well, I'm talking about the men. You, you mentioned yeah. yourself and the men. I, I, I said the men. The men. Mm. What are you telling the men they deserve? Not me. Okay. Are you a virgin? No. All right. So if you've ever dated a man, mm -hmm. you, you, that's my, my point is you're telling me and they don't deserve nothing. I get it's about you, but you talked about how you feel about yourself and how you're, you're, uh, mm -hmm. you're not ready for a child, but do you even know what men want? Hmm. Were you raised with dad? No. All right. Big that's problem things that I'm working through now. Big problem in the black community. So the first time, verse, sadly, the first time a lot of black folks come together is in the bed. So the value of the value of men in a lot of sisters' eyes is very low. It's transactional. You're here for money and sex. Mm -hmm. And you've skipped all the way to the fact of high value uh what do you do for a living i'm a recruiter uh do you, and where'd you graduate from where mm -hmm. wellesley wellesley so if you were just a high school graduate would you still be asking for a high value man probably not exactly so in this short conversation you Kind of come to the real uh, reveal that you're judging men based upon your in, your education and your income, and that's not a female's currency with men. It's your looks. Mm. Women in your position are giving men the opposite of what they want, and telling them, "Take it or leave it." 
And see, I'm rude for saying that. But the reality of your life tells you the options you get from the kind of men you say you want. Mm -hmm. So my question, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put you in the call queue. Um, my question to the ladies is, do you want to hear what you want to hear? Or do you want to hear some more of those old good lies? Because I'm tired of hearing that I'm so mean. When you have women night after night say the things you hear them say, and I just say it, but it's like, well, you're not supposed to say it. You're making her feel bad. Well, well ladies, let me ask you, what about what the, how the men want? What about what the men feel? You've heard these women talk about how they left their husbands carrying on. But nobody ever say, I've never heard anybody with the harsh comments about what I say about women, say anything about what the men want. Um, Jay, what is this? Jalisa? Jalisa. Jalisa. Hi, how are you? Hi, Jalisa. Um, Good night. Who are you talking to? Your kid? No, I'm talking to you. Mm. Can you hear me well? No, you said good night, though. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Caribbean, so we say good night. It's like good evening. Mm. Okay, so you want to be white? Definitely not. Um, I definitely prefer to date black men. I don't see myself with a white man. Um, I believe black people should marry. They should reproduce together. Um, but I did call in to speak for women, women who don't want to call in. Um, cause I do kind of understand where black women are coming from when they date out. Okay. Um, so you started off talking about the way that, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but from what I remember you were talking about, um, how black men, they don't like being disrespected by black women. They don't like being clowned if they're acting white. And so something about a free for all, like that's why they date out. Uh, well, no man likes being disrespected by women. Okay. Right. Uh, and black men in this scenario are tired of having to fight everybody. Mm -hmm. So they're so, looking for some peace. Right. I understand that. Um, so I just wanted to say that I feel like that is the exact reason why black women are dating out from what I've been told. So I'm definitely pro-Black, but I can understand where they're coming from. Like a lot of Black women talk about being disrespected by Black men, not being valued by Black men. And so that is why they date out Jaleesa, as well. Jaleesa, have you yeah. ever asked questions three levels deep? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Okay. Meaning, if, how long have you been watching my show? Um, about a week now. You notice I tend to ask a question in the follow-up and follow-up and follow-up? Mm -hmm. three levels deep and what okay. you tend to find out is when some there tend to be tropes it's it's amazing to me how many women divorce their husbands and they're all whooping their ass they're all abusive i noticed, I noticed that too have you ever asked so the women that say these things i'm tired of being disrespected by black men have you asked well what do you mean well why do, um, no 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 that see that's one level see the, the statement okay and then you ask a question, well, what do you mean? And then you let them tell you what that means. Then you follow up, well, well, what caused that? And what caused that? And then you tend to find out if they're just saying something to be honest or they're absolving their self of responsibility. Okay. And I don't I don't disagree with you. I think that on both sides, um, there's there's blame. I do absolutely agree that um for a long time, black women have not been respecting the black men in their lives, but I also see the flip side. And so for the same reason that you're whoa, saying- Whoa, 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 hold on. I'm gonna push you back. Where? Okay. Where are you seeing the the flip side? Um, I'd say from my own experience. Um, So I've grown up in a lot of different circles. Like I've always been the one that, um, I went to a predominantly white high school, a predominantly white oh, college. By the way, I didn't, ask you, how, I, put, I didn't ask you, how old are you? 25. Okay. Also, you got me on speakerphone or are you watching YouTube? I don't have YouTube up and I do have you on speaker. I don't know if I can change okay. that. Okay. So 25 years old, 
Where are black men disrespecting black women? So my experience comes from um, college days, um, a lot of the social groups that I used to be a part of post-college here in New York City. Um, what are we talking about yeah, as far as disrespect, though? <laughs> Whew. So I'll talk a little bit about my own experience. Um, there's been times when they get, excuse me, um, Black men would make fun of my friends and I, our looks, our hair. For example, when natural hair started getting really popular, um, a lot of us would wear our natural hair out. You know. All right. Let me stop you right here. Let me stop you right here. That's not personal relationships. Yeah. Black women, black people have a snapping Jones in culture. What I'm looking for from you is to tell me where black men are disrespecting black women in mass, like we see in the media with black men who are you're either a high value black man who's cheating and beating your woman's butt or you're a felon or down low dude. You never really see strong black men anywhere who are doing the right thing. I'm mm -hmm. asking for where are you hearing black women say I am with black men and he's disrespecting me in, in context of a relationship. So I have heard that, but I haven't, like you said, I haven't gone deep enough to ask. Exactly. Why, uh, exactly. But you say, but, but here, but what you offered that is the flip side. Right. And it's because not, I, you know, I do see it's not the flip side. See, let me, let me see. You ladies are so quick and cavalry. You play with the black male image so flippantly. And, but you want us to, but hold on, but you're pro black, right? Yes, sir. All right, you play with the you. This is the same women that want to be called queens and goddesses and all that, and don't want mothers of the earth and everything else. Mm -hmm. But you play with the black man's image so flippantly. You just said that if you see the flip side, and you can't even explain the flip side you said you saw. And then when I dig down into your question, you said, "Well, I guess what I didn't, I really didn't dig enough." So you can't say that happened. Well, to be completely honest, I don't like to speak on situations like you said that I don't know the full story. Well, then to. don't I'm say you okay. Well, I then heard. don't say then okay. But problem is on a show you're saying that I see it on both sides. No, ma'am, there's too much of that in the black community. See, when a black man, so, when a man, listen, listen, when a man does something, we blame the man. When a woman does something, we blame the man too. We got to stop that. Well, she did something wrong, but he did, he probably did something to deserve it. No, ma'am. Enough of that. Okay. I agree. Um, another thing I wanted to ask you, um, let me, so the, the biggest question I think I had was, um, because the beginning of the show you were talking about, a uh, black woman who want to go over there. Black women who want to date Brad, et cetera. But why aren't you addressing the black men who date out when they're the ones who are doing it the most? Because this is the same. Th okay. Same stuff. You got women get stuck in loop. Why, why aren't you addressing the black men? When, man, let me ask you, when do black women ever address black women's issues? When are black women ever addressing black women without anyone else? Um, I can't answer that. Because it doesn't happen, ma'am. You're pro-black. Are you familiar with Shaharazad Ali? No, I'm not. The black man's got to understand the black woman? Oh, yeah. I heard right. You right. See, this is how this tends to go. Start talking about what black women do, then automatically, well, well, what black, black men do this? Okay. On Wednesday night, we're talking about black women. Can you talk about them and not bring men into it? Every one of your, Ooh. hold on. Every okay. one of your points, you've tied it back to men as well. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, like I can said, you ex really can you acknowledge that first? Yes. Every one of your yes. points, you've tied it back to men. <laughs> yes, because that's what I took notice to tonight in particular. That's and what you did what? Like I said, that's what I took notice to tonight in particular. That's why I wanted to clarify just because I thought your audience is mostly men. So I was just curious as to why you weren't addressing those men who date out since they statistically are the ones who No, ma'am. Well, if you want to play the statistics game, okay, I'm, I'm about to lose my patience and I'm tell you why. 
-hmm. because I've already said tonight is about the women. Why do you, I need to discuss the men on the women's night. Oh, forgive me. I'm so sorry. I didn't hear when you said tonight is about the women. I've, I just I said, know, I've said it three times, well. but the thing is, I just asked you, when do, what, when do you as women ever get around and discuss the things you guys do and not and men don't come up in it as, as a, as a causation. See what you're doing is the same thing that typically is done. Anytime yeah, you I, 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 absolutely. And that's the problem. And this is what men are. Okay. Your first question is, why do men get men get tired of this? Mm -hmm. They get tired of being fighting the entire world and then having to come back and be responsible for black women's poor behavior and get tired of black women accepting that black men are responsible for their poor behavior. See, if I came in and said the opposite, that I, the, I'm, the reason I date out is because these black women are like this, you would question me. Black women would question me to the nth degree. But when a black woman says it, you just let it roll like water off a duck's back. That shows well, what you really that shows you what that shows what a lot of sisters really think about brothers. You know really, what is your opinion of black are, are you do you have a husband? No, I'm dating. I have a boyfriend. Okay. Do most of the women you deal with have a high opinion of black men? Absolutely. <laughs> And yes. are they in the majority of the minority of the black community? Well, the thing is, I can't speak for the whole black community. If you had to take a guess, if you had to take a guess, mm -hmm. do most sisters have a high opinion of black men? Most, the majority is anything over fifty percent. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the majority is, but I don't well, think it's without reason. Uh, again, again, see what we just did. This is why but, I don't so know. I you, no. Hell no. Again. The same crap. No, I don't think the majority is, but it's not their fault. How do you how do you deal with this? Black women who think I'm too harsh. How do how are men supposed to deal with this? What you keep telling men is, well, you need to understand where they're coming from and this and that. No, we don't. Nope. Men are saying enough. Either you come to the table and you start taking care of your responsibility, I take mine, and we hammer out a deal, or it's a wrap. This culture, this community will fall apart. There will be no more black culture. Men are not kiss, not, men are not taking this in mass. They're just not. And, and honestly, it baffles me that you can have someone who's pro-black who keeps trying to, yeah, but the women are just never at fault and never have any accountability. If they did do something, it's not without cause. All right. That's why we have such a low marital rate. Not going to happen here. Hello? Hello. Okay, you got to mute the channel in the background. How are you? I'm fine. You got to mute the channel. Okay. What's your first name? My name is Otasia. Oh, Otasia? Yes. Really? What's the problem? Oh, you can check that shit. That don't fly here, sis. I'm saying you asked me my name and I told it. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now. Here's what you do. You either get that attitude in check or get off my phone. I didn't have attitude. Yes, you, you did. Said, really? I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. You either get it in check or get off my phone. I just said, really? I don't have an attitude. All right, chick. chick I'm, I'm not going to do this with you. Goodbye. Otasia. Your mama shouldn't have did that to you. I'm not doing this. What's the problem? The problem is the fact that you're a woman thinking you can call in here and check a man. Try that with your punk boyfriend. That don't work with men. Hello? Hello. Hi. Uh, your first name is? Darian. Can you speak up a little bit, please? Oh, sure. Can you hear me better now? A little bit. Uh, what do you have on the topic? Um, I don't know. It's an interesting topic. So are you saying that 
do black women think we're white or can you just kind of go over it just one more time with me? <laughs> How old are you? 26. 26. The question is often black people who tend to want to do better tend to have mm-hmm. to get over the trope of you trying to be white. That's one okay. thing. That's one thing. That's another. And there's another side to the argument. A, a dating outside of it. I don't care if you date out, but why are you dating out? Yeah. So I consider myself to be a successful black woman and I date black men, Hispanic men, white men. I date all men and I mostly date men based on their character. You know, it's not really based upon what they look like, you know, how tall they are. It's really about their character, their values and their morals. Okay. So are you dating to get married? Yes. What's the longest relationship you've had? Four years. And the race of that man? He was black. And why didn't, um, and why, like an Afro-Latino. And why didn't you guys get married? I really feel like I was settling. And I really felt in my spirit that, you know, we went to uh, go. So, let, let me, let, let, so let, hold on. Were you raised by your mother and father? Yes. And did you make more than him? At the time, I didn't. Right. And what does he do for a living? Um, I don't know. He was a manager at that point in time. But, but now, were you in college when you guys met? Yeah. And then we after you young. graduated, you start making more? I was on the path. I'm an accountant now, so hold on. I was on the Hold on, on just, a, just a second. <sighs> So he was good enough until you graduated. He was he was good enough until you got a degree. I wouldn't say that. But you said you felt like you were settling. Settling is not a good thing. Uh, how tall are you? Five nine. Dress size? A four, but a six in skirts. <laughs> okay, and um, if you're out, and what did you graduate at? What age? I graduated, well, I the program I was in, I graduated at 23. Are you noticing a lot of your colleagues that are graduated around the time of you, are they getting married? No. You're not noticing um, well, non-black women? Non-black women are getting married? No, they aren't. I have a friend who's not black. She's divorced. Mm-hmm. Um, another mm-hmm. friend who's on her second marriage. Oh, um, so why did you feel like you were settling? He was a manager. He was a manager. Mm-hmm. Did he have his own car, his own place? Yeah, he definitely had his own car. He had his own place. I think the reason I felt like I was settling was because of the way he treated me. And I, I mean, knew which that- year, ma'am? Which year are we talking about? You were together for? Um, probably around like year three. Like years three and four were kind of the years that we were on and off. And I just noticed you were on that and off. You were on and off, meaning you were together, and then you'd break up. Yeah. We when you break up, when you would break up, who would initiate the breakup? Usually me. Right. Right. And were you dating anybody on the, on your breaks? Um. I mean, I. That's a yes or no. That's a yes or no. Yeah. Were you hooking up with anybody on your breaks? No. All right. So a guy that you were with that you kept breaking up with. Why, why? What was wrong with his treatment of you in year three? You know, I really just started to feel that he his character wasn't right. His morals weren't right. And he liked me as the broke college girl. Uh huh. So why didn't you you didn't me. notice you didn't notice this in but four months, six. I mean, you're in year three. No. No, I had no idea because I mean, really? I was, I was kind of broke compared to him. So I think you were what? I didn't you were what? You were, I mean, I, you were kind of what compared to him? I mean, I was broke at the time right. compared to him. So, so the treatment was okay. Maybe I don't. I See, don't. Here's think the I was thing: you and I asked you, were you raised with your mom and dad? Yes, I was. You, were your parents were married? Yes, they were married before they had children. All right. Uh, did your father we'll meet this guy? Did your father meet this guy? He did. But what do you yeah. think of him? You know, he thought he liked him. Honestly, he felt that he was a good man. He was a good leader. 
and he but you didn't. really had no problems. No, I okay. think that he didn't. All right, I stop. Think- listen, listen, ma'am, stop digging. Stop digging. You're in a big hole right now. How often do you watch my show? I just ran across it. All right. Well, let me let you, let me let you, I'm I'm stopping you. You're about to, you're about to get right into the edge of a black hole. You're so deep. You painted the picture of a man who accepted you as a college student was with you for years. You broke up with him and you would still get back together. He was earning and all of it, he was earning the entire time. But now that you have a piece of paper and a little more money, he ain't good enough. Your dad even liked him. And your dad met your mom and had kids, the right, did it the right way. You, ma'am, are on the verge of being in the danger zone. And going to be one, going to be, he, he, be one of those eternal sevens because now. Danger zone! Cause now you're out here without your four year boyfriend and you're just on that, on that, uh, carousel running up your numbers and you're not 20 anymore. You still talk to this guy? No, I, I mean, you know, some things, if you got to go with your gut, no, you don't, no, you don't, you shouldn't be picking any of this shit. No, you don't. (laughs) No, you shouldn't. You should listen to your father because he knows better than you. Uh, hopefully you got cat insurance. I'm not, I'm joking, but I'm serious. Four years. This guy was with you and your father liked him, said he was a good man. Ain't nothing wrong with this man is you think you can do better. So that's fine. Let's go with it. How many children you want to have? One or two. One. Don't do that to a kid. I mean, whatever God has for me. Honestly. This ain't God's choice. It's your choice. How many do you want? How come it's so hard for women to just be direct? How many do you want? Two. If I had a choice, it'd be two. That was the first question, ma'am. Two kids. Do you want to have to work to pay significant bills after you're pregnant? No, I don't. I actually want to. All right. Kind of be- and what city do you live in? I live in the South. What city do you live in? I live in Texas. Austin? No, not Austin. Just Texas. Is it, ma'am, no one knows you. I'm not, I mean, come on. I like to just kind of keep a little profile. Oh, Jesus Christ. Why do you regular, mm, Jesus Christ, okay. You keep that low profile, okay? I will. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate the chat. No, you don't. I do. I feel no, like you really don't, ma'am. No, you really don't. Because, see, I don't know why you why you folk call into a show thinking you're going to keep a low profile. Like somebody, if they know your voice, they know your voice. I'm just trying to understand if you're in a major city or not. I really don't care. But the net net of it is, ma'am, you are sadly like so many other American women. American black women likely are overvaluing yourself. Your father said the guy was good. The guy seemed like a stable, decent man. You put up with your BS because if you break up with a guy and, he, and you got back, just yeah, he's probably better off, you know. All right, man. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. No, no, no. I'm done talking to you. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope, nope, nope. You see how that goes? And that'll be the same woman in three years talking about, I can't find no men. We're all a good men because you had yours and you blew it. Video on my channel. You already had your man and you blew it. That woman was hell up uh, anyway. No, Otasia, you can't call back in here talking to me. I'm not going to let you back in here. You need to go and get that, do something with that name though. Otasia. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Uh, what, um, what's your first name? So I can know. What Brianna. Call? Brianna. How are you, Brianna? I'm good. Good. All right. So tell me what you got on the topic or what did I get wrong or right or whatever. 
Um, I just wanted to comment on what Black women need to do um, in order to reconnect <laughs> Black families. And I think that the most important thing Black women need to do is learn how to manage their emotions. Um, because growing up, I feel like I was kind of trained to be irrational for some reason. Um, I was expected to be crazy. Yep. Because, <laughs> yeah, in the Black community, you know, if you're crazy and you're slashing people how old, tired, how old are you? I'm 24. <laughs> And uh, do you, uh, are you married? Yes. Okay. Were you raised by your mom? Were your mother and father married? They got divorced. So I was raised by my mom. All right. So yes, in the black community, we do tell black women it's okay to be crazy, burn up stuff, cut stuff. I mean, <laughs> waiting to exhale, Angela Bassett was held it for committing arson. Mm-hmm. So... What man wants to deal with that? You're right. You said to connect with black family. How did you actually get over it and, and get to the point to where you could actually deal with a brother? Are you deal are you dealing with a brother? Are you married to a black? Yes. Man? How'd you get yes. over that? <laughs> um, to be honest, I think I was lucky. <laughs> um, but one of the first things I had to do was get rid of like hood mentality. Mm -hmm. Um, so I went to college and then realizing that that world is pretty irrational, um, the hood world. Right. Getting, um, you know, just not being a part of that. Um, and then I met a really nice black man and he liked me and I liked him and um, it went on from there. <laughs> I'm glad you got, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you got out of that. Uh, but how many people <laughs> tried to tell you, oh girl, you don't need to be married this young? Um. Um, most people didn't know I got married. Okay. Um, we kind of just did it. <laughs> why? Why? Why did most people know? Because I know that they told that's... you don't be doing this. Cause it, mm, yes. yep. <laughs> we praise dysfunction. Bizarro <laughs> land. My buddy says this is a bizarro land. Black America. Up is down. Right is left. And yeah. we wonder why we can't get together. Well, thank you for calling in. Appreciate it, sis. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, man. You know. So women often ask, "Well, how do you? How do you? How do you fix it?" Uh, you fix it by stop digging. Get rid of all that toxic, negative, strong, independent, I don't need no man, or or like the previous caller who was with a perfectly decent man, but she figured because she got a degree now, she should be getting somebody who's making double what she makes plus some, and he needs to be six feet to unrealistic expectations. So, hey, um, here we go. Lee. What's going on, Hello. Lee? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Um, it's Leah, by the way. It's Leah. Leah, I'm sorry. What do you got for me on the topic? Yes. Um, back to earlier, um, when Jaleesa, I guess that was her name that called oh, in fun, 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 First off, how old um, are you? How old are you? I'm 27. Okay, go ahead. In the danger zone or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, um... In terms of interracial dating, I'm not for interracial when it comes to black men and women dating out. Like, I'm not for interracial. Um, I noticed how early you said that black women tend to get fetishized by white men. Like, how do you feel in general about just white people in general, just fetishizing black people? Uh, it's a, Even on the It's, a, it's a bigger topic than I really want to deal with at this point because it's too broad. Uh -huh. Um I, I mean, I, interracial dating. What's going on here? Interracial dating, honestly, I don't really care because it's always going to be a, a small percentage. The bigger problem with any of it is downing other groups. It's when you date out and then you turn talk crap about black men. That's a bigger issue. You're never going to stop human beings from being... Uh, dealing with who they want to. So I don't I don't think that's a big problem. The problem is this. Are you pro black? Uh yes, I guess you could say that. Okay. I've only talked to black men. Okay. So here's the thing. If you actually had and I and I just use I mean you're for black community, black family. For black family. Yes. All right. See, the problem isn't it is the bigger problem 
a handful of black men and black women going over to date some date and marry somebody else or is the problem the the big number of black men and black women can't get together and make families um the second one right i would have to say because a lot of the times i feel like when you're dealing with people outside of your community another race or whatever ethnicity a lot of people like to get the two confused it's it's always like some underlying issue whether the family doesn't like you or something and i don't want to deal with that so that's why i kept myself out of the interracial i, I get you know, it I, I get it i get it but the, i asked the, i asked a bigger question are you married no okay uh, you got youtube in the background you got to shut that down uh do i I thought it was muted or turned down. I didn't hear anything. Because I keep is, hearing something. Is it fine now? Okay. Okay. So again, the energy you're putting into that, how, okay. I get what you're saying. It's still a smaller problem. How about mm -hmm. black men? How about black women who can't, who, who cannot make it work with their black men that they've been with for years? We just had a woman on here for four years mm -hmm. and she wasn't married. You got anything on that? No. No. I would rather, you know, get married and then have kids. I don't believe in no, you know, no, no. They, kids. no, they were together. Lot, I didn't say have kids, ma'am. I didn't say have kids. I said they were got. They were together four years and did not get married. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything on that? Uh, that's a that's a reach. I feel like if you're talking that long, you should have been married already. <laughs> but you know, I was just saying in general, you know, I'm not for the whole, you know, having kids out of wedlock and everything. So, so a lot of the times when I ask them if they have kids, like majority of the time they say yes, and it kind of irritates me. Okay, all right. Let's focus on the positives. Interracial mm -hmm. over here, kids over there. How do you talk to your friends or your homegirls who are in these situationships forever? I don't really talk to people like that when it pertains to things but, on that of that sort. Like I, I just family? don't really meddle into that. All right, it's not. I mean, it's, family neither. I'm, I'm not really close with. Okay, yeah, I don't people. think you're hearing me right, ma'am. I think you're not hearing me. The situation ship means they're just. I don't talk to my friends about that. All right, well, all right. Thank you for calling in. All right. Look, I don't think she can hear me. What I'm saying. We waste a lot of time in the black community arguing about nothing. A percentage of any group is always going to marry out. Date out. I could care less. Just don't throw shade and throw shots. But the bigger issue is right now, men and women in our group don't like one another. Shout out to Obsidian. Can't get along. And I'm talking to the women today. If you think you can take, if here's the thing, the women who date out, if black women who date out could take the way they act for the guys over here towards black men, problem will solve itself. Treat Keith like you treat Brad, problem will solve itself. Black men have been asking for that for the longest. But what do you end up hearing? Well, he ain't built... Wakanda yet. That's a ridiculous argument. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Good. Your first name is? Um, I'm Ashley. Ashley. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. What do you got um, to be on the topic? So in terms of interracial dating, I personally am more attracted to white guys. Okay. Um, however, my father is a high value black man. So I have a lot of appreciation for the black man, especially one that is high value and sees the importance of actually taking care of his family. Now, let me ask you, uh, how old are you? I'm 21. 21. Okay. Um, are, are the only men who can take care of their family high value? No, not at all. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, I'm just, I just wanted to ask that because if you have a, say you have a high value father, you're more attracted to the mm -hmm. white men, but you have this, okay, what's there to argue about? That's nothing to argue about. You uh, can be attracted to who you're attracted to. That's fine. Yeah. 
So, exactly. um, are you uh, engaged or are you plan or got plans to be married anytime soon? Um, I plan to marry maybe between the ages of 23 and 25. Right now, I think I'm a little too young. Where are you from? Uh, Where are you from? Uh, I'm originally from I'm originally from Kenya. All right. Is your father involved in helping you pick a mate? Um, the thing is, my father is very detached. He's a he's a very kind of workaholic. So I don't think he's very involved. Um, I haven't really spoken to him Why? about Why? this kind of thing. Why? Just in general, my father and I, uh, we don't in, in African households because I am predominantly from an African household. I understand. I speak, to, but again, yeah, again, he's the, he he can't be a high value man and be a stay at home dad. You got to be detached. He's not a stay at home dad. I, he's not a stay at home oh, dad. Oh Jesus, that's what I said, ma'am. I said high value men cannot be stay at home dads. They got to work. Right. So saying he's detached, he should be. He's working. Right. But he but. Does your mom work? No, she doesn't. So your father made you possible, made it for your mom, made it possible for your mom. I think it would make the most sense for you to involve the men that made it possible for your mom to stay at home and give you the life you got. Then you go out here with your 21 years thinking you know how to do it on your own. Um, I, I actually don't think I know how to do it on my own, which That's is why I'm on That's not the point. I asked you, is your father involved? And you said no. And he right. should be. Okay. I mean, due respect, ma'am. Did you go to college? I'm currently in college. Who's paying for it? My father. Then why don't you go to the man who's made it possible for everything you are to exist? Get his advice on what you need to be. You need to get, you need to talk to your father, ma'am. Simple as that. You got one. I, I completely agree with you. That's all I'm saying. Speak to your father. He should right. be involved in this. I mean, pro when I asked you at what age you said you want, I know that you were from the continent and rather by your, mm -hmm. by your tone. And when you said you want to get married between this and this, it was a red flag. I'm like, wait a minute. What is a woman from, from the continent doing leading this process? If your father's a high value man, that's a Western thing. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's completely Western. Right. Right. And that's um, wrong. It's wrong. Uh -huh. It's wrong. I mean, I'm going to say it's wrong. You got a high value father who's made, who got your mother to be a stay at home wife and you got college paid for. You need to get involved with your dad. I don't know what the issues are between you, but guess what? Would you like to have a life like your mother had? I would, but my father is not of that same opinion. What are the opinions he of, man? Because a my minute ago you said you, because a minute ago you said you don't talk to him about any of this. Now he's not of that opinion. No, my father has always drilled into me that I need to stay educated. Man, and focus what is, one, one thing does not preclude the other. Did he say you, you need to work? Yeah, he did. So he wants you to be what? My father is, has always been of the opinion that because he has invested so much in my education and my uh, education throughout my life that I should work and be, you know, independent. That's what my father thinks. Your father, so your father, so let me get this right. Your father, who married his wife and had a stay-at-home wife, thinks that his daughter mm -hmm. should be independent and unmarried. He thinks I should be independent. He didn't say I should be unmarried, but he uh, well, those, those two, but those two things. Oh, listen, slow down, breathe. Those two things don't go together. You can't be independent and married. Independent financially. You cannot be independent and married. Financially independent. You cannot be financially. <clears throat> Young lady. I think you need to sit down with your father. Clarify what you think he believes, because I have a hard time believing as a father that your father's invested all this for you just to get out of here and become just like any other woman in this country by yourself, mm -hmm. working and no man, no family. None of that stuff. I think you're. Okay. I think you're just. I think you're speaking for him, but this ain't how men who do what like your father tend to think. This is very Western. Okay. Talk to your father. All right. I, Ask I him. Get involved. Because uh, the worst All thing right. that could happen is 
he not be on the same page, but at least he needs to be involved, give you some 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 direction. Because right now you're out here vetting all these men yourself. How are you choosing a man? Right. Right. All right. Have a good day, Lane. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Ooh. All righty then. I want to make sure I've already talked to this person. Hello? Hi. Haven't we already spoken? Yes, we have. Okay. Let me go ahead and get, I'm going to bounce you out then. Thank you. Let me get this person here. This person still coming back. Uh, what do you want? I wanted to talk to you. Mm -hmm. What you do is you go to my website and you book a session. You check out. And then after you pay me, we'll schedule your session. That's the only way you're going to talk to me. You don't get to be rude to me and then get to talk to me for free. You just learned a lesson today. Candice, hello. How are you? Hi, hello. How are you? I am good, and you? I am well. What do you got on the topic? Um, <clears throat> well, I've only caught some of it, and I've heard you mention about like black women. So I'm nervous. Um, How old are you? Black women want. It's twenty two. Twenty two. Um, are you married or unmarried? Not married. Are you Are you dating interracially or dating at all? Um. Right now, not really, not really. I'm not really dating anyone oh. or anything serious. Okay. Um, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what do you have on the topic? Because that's kind of what it's about. Yeah. Um. So I caught that you mentioned about like black women wanting to, um, date out and date like white men because apparently they like have a lot of complaints about black men. I don't know what you're doing, ma'am, but your your mouth needs to stay on the microphone because it's moving all Hello? over the place. Yes. Is it better? That's it. That's it. Okay. You're not dating. What? What's the question? No, it's not a question. I'm um, just wanting to comment on what you're saying about black women wanting to basically spoil because they have a lot of complaints about black men. You're not dating. Can't help you. Uh, hello, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Good evening, Kevin. H- hello. How are you? I am well. A little bit, a little bit more volume. So, uh, how old are you? You well? How old you are you? Have, you will have a field day with me. I am thirty. Well, about to turn thirty-six. Why would I have a field day with you? <laughs> I've been listening to you for the past few weeks. Then you and should know that I'm pretty. Uh, that I'm I'm pretty fair. As long as you reason, as long as you tell the truth. <laughs> yes, sir. You don't have to call me, sir, but go ahead. Well, uh, staying on topic, I, of course, have dated outside. And, uh, you know, especially now at my age, I have put money. I have put money and generating more money above settling down. Okay. And now, I mean, I'm definitely at, you know, as you said the other day, you are closer to 40 than 30. Now, you're going to have to speed it up and get to the question because I got more people in there. What was So Go ahead. my point is, is since my, of my situation, I'm buying a house on the lake and I'm going to find a mate in Silicon Valley. Find so- a maid or a mate? Mate, M-A-T-E, husband. Oh, you are, are you? Well, I have the money, so. Oh, so you're going to go buy one? (laughs) Well, make myself more, you know, attractive. How tall are you? Five, ten and a half. Dress size. (laughs) A size 12. I gained weight in my 30s. A size 12. I didn't know that's 30, okay. And what's the largest dress size you've been? Oh, 14. 14. Okay, so you're going to go buy a house? Yes. On the lake? And then you go, okay. And and you're going to be in what part of California? 
No, I'll, I'll, I'm buying a home okay. uh, in Gainesville, a lake house. Okay. Um, and after that, get liposuction. After that, go fly to Silicon Valley, you know, here and there. Because I, you know, I, the income definitely allows me to, my income. Well, congratulations, and, you got money. And use use the money as access to no, gain access. No, no, no. No, no, you're in the fantasy world. See, that's what we do. Look, look. what I need you to do is look, uh, look straight ahead, okay? Yes, sir. All right, then I need yeah. you, then I need you to look straight ahead. Focus directly, yes, look yourself in the eye, okay? And then yes. I need you to look 90 degrees down. Do you see a penis there? You are, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> then you're trying to do things like men would do. No, you get found. See, you're trying to cheat. You're trying to cheat because you have money. I'm going to go buy a house. So that will be some bait. Then I'm going to cheat and get liposuction because I don't want to do the work. Then I'm going to go out to California and try to sprinkle myself around and hope I can bait somebody. Good. Uh, do you want somebody making money on your level? Um, to be very honest with you, that's a yes or no. I am open to men who do not. Okay, so would you good with somebody making uh, fifty thousand, forty thousand, or fifty thousand dollars a year? If he was, is that a yes or no? Don't give me an if and don't give me this bull crap. If he was a genie, yes or no? Fifty grand. Yes, if he's in the military. Oh, no, no, no. See, 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 no, yes. no. You don't. Wow. If he's in the military, a man. Would you be all right with him making 50 grand as long as it's legal? Yes. Yes, Kevin. I'm okay with that. Yes. Wow. The point being, man, the men that make what you make, we've already discussed that. But are you all right paying for a man? Because you're going to want to live at your income level. Yes or no? Kevin, may I ask a question? After you answer mine. So you're. So do you? Your he's making are, fifty thousand. Are you willing to live on fifty? No, I. I then I, you don't want a fifty thousand dollar man. No, to, no. To to answer your question, yes, I'm okay with a fifty thousand man, fifty thousand. But you don't want to live on his money, so you listen, man. When was the last time you had a long-term relationship with a man? I knew you would ask this. Of course I am, because you are very detached from reality. And you got the I, money. You should you could pay for the session or we can do it here. Man, let's, know, just, actually, let's just get right to the point. You have priced yourself out of the market. Your success is good, but it not it doesn't count. You have a looks market, not a financial market. The average Black man in this country earns $40,000. That's the bulk of the men. And are you an above? Are you a, you already said you're a, a plus size woman. Are you pretty beautiful or gorgeous naturally? I have long curly hair. Then that's, that's a no. You're an average looking woman. No. You're an average looking woman who's over her healthiest weight. Hence the liposuction. It's still, oh, Jesus Christ. The delusion is just real. But if I have the money, like, you know. You can't buy a man. You can't, first off, you can't buy a high value man. Can I buy beauty to lead me? No, because you don't know. No, you got what you got. You want to lie. See, liposuction without the exercise you'll just get fat i i work all right ma'am i am going to hang this up because i keep telling you something and this is why dealing with women your age is a problem you can't even have a conversation with a high value man how to french toast are you gonna have a relationship hmm 
You can't even have a five minute conversation without being contentious. Cause you think somebody gives a crap about your money. Your money don't mean nothing to us. Did you hear what I said? I heard what you said. Your money doesn't mean anything to us. And a straight up man at 50, he's going to say, look, babe, we're going to live on my 50. He ain't going to let you put him up in some lake house to where he can't pay the mortgage and you got him in a car. And that means men don't want to be kept men. You know the kind of guys that want to do that? Beta males. You want a punk. Go. You're right. Excuse me? You're right. That's I know. Happened. That's exactly what happened before. Well, all right. Well, uh, therapy. Have you gone to therapy yet? Uh, No. All this damn money. Okay. Here's the here's the formula. You need therapy, personal trainer, image consultant, matchmaker. Because you are far out. See. If you didn't have the money you had, there's no way you could be as detached and deluded you as you are. If you had to go work in a call center or a regular job in retail, you think you can buy me and that's not how it works. You can buy beta males, but men, nope. And you know, getting that gun well, you're not gonna be willing to live it. You're not gonna be willing to live at what the husband, if you could find him, would provide. And you don't want no fifty thousand dollar man either. You say that for a phone call, that's twenty five dollars an hour, man. That's a thousand dollars a week before taxes. Thousand dollars a week. Kevin, if I may, may I may I retort? Yeah, go ahead. You made a very important point a few shows, a few broadcasts, excuse me, a few broadcasts ago, where you said chaos, where high value men do not want to deal with chaos. And when you said that, it truly resonated with me because I do not want that. I cannot afford that. I cannot afford chaos because obviously, that's why when I mentioned I am okay with a 50,000, 60,000, honestly, Kevin. <laughs> Man, that's why 60, I said 70, military, yeah. police, because they're more disciplined. A, a yeah, military what, uh, you don't know that, ma'am. You don't know that. You're okay. assuming that. You don't know that. You don't know that. You're in your head. You've made up a fantasy world. How many, pro- a $50,000, do you know what a $50,000 car looks like? I mean, a car on a $50,000 salary looks like, you know what a home looks like, you know what the friends look like, you know what the school looks like, the kind of money you're talking like you have, you're not going to be able to deal with it. That's a good point. Forget Tom Ford, Chanel, and Neiman Marcus, you're going to be at Macy's and Ross. Forget Ruth Chris, you're going to be at Outback on your anniversary. Knock it off, man. Therapy, matchmaker, personal trainer, image consultant. Have a good day. And lipo. For your brain. What the heck? We got to do a better one than that. What's going on with my taps, man? Now let me translate to all the women. Oh, he just made that woman feel like it's all her fault in her life. He just talked so mean to that woman and so rude to that woman. And he just told her her life was effectively over and that she just did not have a chance. And it's so sad. I I told her the truth that she needed to hear. And your crocodile tears don't help women like that. They don't. The net net of it is sadly this, especially if you're a college educated or professional woman, the longer you wait to get a husband, the harder it's going to get because you're only going to make more money and go further up. And the, every time you gain something, you lose men. 
Let me say this. Every time you gain something, you lose potential men. Go back to the young accountant. He was fine as a manager at whatever when she was in school. But every time she went up, he became less and less and less and less. Hypergamy, ladies. This is why you get married early and build together. Because if you get to this age to where this woman is trying to become the bionic woman, you know, liposuction. No, no, just this all kind of bad. Who wants that? You lost weight with liposuction? Still going to have all that skin hanging around and carrying on? The money you spent on life, just no. Get therapy, ma'am. Honestly, therapy, because you're outside of reality. Um, lower your hand. Um. Uh, who is this? Unmute yourself, Noir. In in Noir. Hello. Suck a dick, bitch. You gotta do better than that, man. You got to do better than that. You got to do better than that. See, that guy, uh, he's one of the guys that works at the Waffle House down the street. And he's upset that I left him 35 cents instead of 50 cents. But see, I need the additional 15 cents for the meter. So I'm sorry. I know you're mad that 15 cents was going to help you pay your Cricket Wireless bill. But I needed that for the meter. And I'm, I know you're still upset, bro, but I promise. Stop calling me, and next week when I slide by there, instead of getting you 35, I'll give, I'll give you an extra quarter, okay? So that'll be like the 15 cents plus a 10 cent upgrade. We cool in? Can you stop calling me and, and doing that? I'll give you a whole 15 cents plus an extra dime. You almost didn't get a Coca-Cola. <laughs> With- <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, hello. Hi, Kevin. Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm laugh- I was laughing a lot. I wanted to get quiet before you answered. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, he's going to yell at me. Oh, no, 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 no. What's going on, chicken? <laughs> he he needed okay. that 15 cent. I'm serious. I mean, it's, I've been there, <laughs> Don't man. Do like that. I mean, I've been there. That 15 cent make a difference, man. It's like, dang, bro. I, I had the dollar for the 99 cent special, but the tax, the tax is fucking mm. with me, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. No. Okay. So, the girl that was before the troll, mm. the girl that was before the troll, I I don't believe real. I don't believe she's real. And, Kevin, this is my first time ever seeing you. Mm-hmm. And um, I was just listening to you, and I wanted to call in because I respect what you're doing. And <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, black, I'm, nor am I white. I'm Middle Eastern. And... I'm really curious uh-huh. about the black community. Okay. I'm really curious about the black community just because, like I said, I live in America now. And you're, you're curious just, about black men? No. Black community. <laughs> about the black community. Okay. About the black community in general. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because I am going to do a show on, because there are a lot of people who call into this show, watch this show, who are interested in the black community. I got people from Ukraine. Uh, it's amazing to me. Um, but do me a favor. Um, could you call back on that show? Because this is a sensitive topic. And just know, just trust me, call back on that show. But is there a question I can answer for you real quick? Um, yes. I just wanted to mention really quickly um, what, I, what the girl was talking about, about marriages and such. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, why is it that uh, black women and uh Black men are having such a hard time. It and look, I'm into politics, and I don't know if it has anything to do with politics. Mm. You can cut me off at any time. Um, but for what I see, is that like I see like the left and Democrats. Kind uh, of it, it's this, fur- it's you know? further than it's further than politics. Uh, and you know, I'll try to kind of go over it this way. But do you have the YouTube channel playing in the background? So I'm gonna mute you. Um, here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, thank you for calling in. I'm gonna address this and move on to the next one. Um, in this country, everyone's dealing with the same family court system, the same political landscape. The family court system is the same, but the difference in in, in the black community, um, I think one of the 
best explanations I've had was a friend, uh, Obsidian said it, Obsidian Media Network. Black people in this country are coming to grips with what it truly means to be free. Meaning that after slavery, the black community, black people still had to get together for survival and everything else. From Jim Crow, black laws, every kind of thing. You had black schools, black neighborhoods, black HB, black communities, black colleges. But after integration and a lot of other things happened too, black people stopped being clustered in these black areas and started moving and being dispersed. So no more is that the family unions and the strong families. And, and there's a lot of reasons why black people stayed together. Um, cultural reasons, tribal reasons, protection, things like that, ostracized. But when you are free, when you're a citizen and you have all these rights that are protected, people are coming together not based on tribal reasons, meaning let's say if you're in a country, you're Middle East, and let's say, for sake of an argument, let's say you're from... Um, Saudi. Well, you, well, oh, that's different. Let's say you're from Iran. All right. It's a homogeneous population. This is a melting pot. But the people who are in the same country, same landmass, same culture, the black community's problem is the culture. We have an American culture, <laughs> uh, but no but no uh, group culture. And everybody's, and all these the black men and black women are all spinning these different plates, some to a lesser or greater degree. So now it's deciding this man and that, this, that woman and this man deciding, all right, you're black, I'm black. Now what? There's a lot going on between folks. But here's the thing. I truly believe that human nature is, draws people closer together. That's why I like these post-apocalyptic things like Walking Dead and Book of Eli because when you get rid of all the technology and everything else, people have a strange way of trying to get back together. All right, I'm going to get on through here. Um, We're going to get these calls in. Oh, it's going late, man. This show is going on. Okay, here are the last few people. We're going to get up out of here. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, I think... Uh-oh. I just unmuted the wrong person. Uh, Aaron, have we already spoken? Uh, Aaron, have we spoken? Yeah. Okay, let me go ahead and put... That was the first one. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Dude, I told you, is it 50 cents? Will that do for you? Okay, Aaron, I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish you out. See, here's okay. the thing. Did you have a question? No. Okay. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. See, the the thing that bothers a lot of people about these kind of conversations is a lot. I mean, in all honesty, a lot of these guys were raised by mom, just like me. And and far too many black men have not self actualized. They've not taken on the responsibility and ownership of being the men they need to be. You don't hear men who are act who are self actualized out here working, competing, being competitive, being angry with a, a a man speaking. They got other things to do. Inevitably, you see a man like this who are not competitive, who sees a man who is, and instead of saying, "Hey, man, how'd that happen? How'd you do that? How can we work together? Give me some tips." His daddy issues are coming up. His father hunger issues are coming up. He's got all these feminine emotions going on in her masculine body mixed with testosterone. And it's a deadly mix. So I make jokes about it and make light of it because we got far too many black boys in black men's bodies. And they really don't know what to do with themselves. Now, the funny thing is, with all this foolishness and anger they have directed towards the very black male image they were raised to hate themselves they were raised to hate they were raised to loathe themselves and loathe the black male image mothers didn't know they were doing it on purpose but when you grow up in a culture where you hear men are disposable men ain't crap whatever what's a boy to think when you don't see a father and don't see men and you all you hear about men is through the lens of women you're confused 
But the thing is, you never see them have that level of smoke or animosity for a white man, a Hispanic man, a Middle Eastern man, or an Asian man. Our natural competitors. That's where the crab in the barrel and the infighting stuff comes from. So I make a joke about it, but I do understand it. And I hope you get some help, bro. Uh, we've got that taken care of. So here's what you're going to do. If you want to get back on the show, you're going to have to uh, start your video. I, I want to, Candace, you're going to have to start your video. Kennedy, you're going to have to start your video. Um, before I let you on, just so I can see who you are. And if not, I will drop I will drop this off because it is past 12.30. We've already gone a little late. Um, who is this? Kennedy? Is that you, Kennedy? What, uh, go ahead, Kennedy. Unmute yourself. Hey. Hey, I'm not going to put you on. What's going on? Okay. You looking at I yourself wanna... on TV? No. Oh, okay. What's going on? <laughs> Hey, I just wanted to know um, if I could be rated. Oh, oh, don't do that to me right now. No. Uh, that's not the right <laughs> show. I can't do that right now. I can't. Uh, All right. But I would do a, I would do another one Friday. That's what I do Friday. Call back on Friday. Okay. Or, or send me an email and I'll do it then. All right. Send me an email. Okay. Just, okay. Remind, just remind me. The email is going to be at the end. Okay. But y'all got to call in mm. on the right days for those. Uh, all right, no one else is showing themselves. So, uh, do here's the net net of it. This show had a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. We cracked over 6,600 people watching. Um, I got no problem with anybody on any side. If you are an IR swirler, whatever happiness are you happy the only issue i have with any side of it is talking bad about the other side no other groups want to hear you talk bad about that side or this side they just don't that conversation needs to that needs to stop you're not gaining points not not with any here's the thing not with any men of consequence you can't talk bad about black men uh, to other groups, to, to, to solid stand-up men of other groups, and them not look at you like you're crazy. The evidence is clear. You can just you can go, go look online and find anybody doing that. You look at the person sitting there next to them, there ain't no catch. Or vice versa. You know, when... Uh, you get some, well, I don't try to look at hip hop or athletes and entertainers, the people who throw shots back at, back the other way or throw it across the other fence. Like, I only like women that are this way. Look, athletes and entertainers don't speak for the, for, for the community. We got to get the working class, business folks, the people in the middle. The war is over. The gender war is over. Black women want black men. Black men want black women. The gender war is over. The people who are still fighting are like those Japanese soldiers on the island that didn't get the message. But if you listen to somebody who's still talking this gender war stuff like five or so years ago, you're like, dude, we, we done with that. Chick, we done with that. Yeah, but these ain't, the, he turned right. People are tired of that. So now it's like, okay, what's next? Do you do you want to die alone or do you want to try to find somebody to see what you can hammer out for the rest of your life? You want some kids? You want some family? What, what do you want? All right, whatever you want. Okay, you don't want none of it? Cool. Then leave the folks who alone who do want it. But you better watch the people who continually want war. The people who continually want war, if they can't war with the other side, they'll eventually start warring with you. All right, I got to get up out of here. I'm tired. The music, I got to see what's going on with my audio. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. We ran a little bit long. 
Until the next time. You know how this goes. Man, we got a lot of folks watching tonight. Wow, it's crazy. Got to do this the old school way. Till the next time. Peace. We are gone. Peace out, people. In this moment, yes. I cannot say what's wrong or right. No. Weapons free. It's Weapons free. Weapons free. Because no. I'm addicted to the good life. Yes. Where'd she go? Waldo, they've been in your face the entire time. Join me on Patreon for videos you will own for live streams Monday to 6 30 Eastern Standard Time. Weather permitting. Alright, here we go. Email your show ideas to info at buykevinsamuels.com or go there to buykevinsamuels.com to book your one-on-one -on -one advice line, interpersonal communication, corporate or career coaching, your virtual consultation on your custom lines. If you're interested in having me play your music or something like that, send me an email. It needs to be copyright free. Or if you're interested in becoming an editor for the show, Take a snippet of something. Tell me what you can do. I'm only doing this for another two weeks, and I'm gonna pick some people, hire them, pay them, and keep it moving. I like your baccarat crystal. Somebody was like, "Why are you drinking this red bull out of a straw? Why don't you drink it out of your baccarat crystal?" I thought you had real class. You insist. Ain't that I didn't have it? Thank you guys for joining. Good night.